Welcome to part two of my Matsushima trip. This is the best part. Matsushima is a seaside town near Sendai, known for a bay with over 200 tiny islands. It's one of Japan's top scenic places. Today we're going to explore an island with spectacular views, find a secret beach, and go to Ensuin Temple, which looks like something from a Studio Ghibli animated film. Part one is already on my channel if you missed it last week. And there's also a room tour of the hotel we stayed in. It's the fanciest Japanese hotel I've been in. And there's new Japan travel videos every Thursday if you want to subscribe. Remember to have a look at my designs on cakeswithfaces.co.uk. Some of them are inspired by Japan and there's lots of things that make good presents. There's worldwide shipping so you can order from any country. Now back to Matsushima. It's really windy now, it's February at the moment and it's lovely and sunny. Quite a lot of these winter days have been sunny, um, but it is quite cold. It's about four degrees today and I think this place must be really different in summer. There's lots of ice cream shops and souvenir shops, like it gets really full of tourists in the summer. It's actually quite deserted at the moment, there's not that many people here. You probably saw on the boat there was hardly anyone else on it. This bridge goes across to Fukurajima, that island there. It's 250 meters long and you can explore the island. There's some walking trails and some little temples and shrines on there. If you want to go across the bridge, it's 200 yen for adults. If the camera's a bit shaky here, I'm sorry, it's because it was so windy. When they say there's 264 islands, I'm wondering if they count the ones like these as islands. They're probably quite big when you get up close. And down here in the water, you can see other small rocks that haven't quite come through as islands. just going down this hidden trail. I hope there's no snakes. <laughs> I imagine in the spring this would be a lot more green and beautiful. It's probably at its worst at the moment, but it's still pretty nice. These are the views from the famous sightseeing spot. This is a good one, you can see a lot of islands in that one. If I went back, I'd definitely go to one of the viewpoints where you can see the whole bay. And I think this might be the temple we saw from the boat. Most of the way has been paved and quite flat, they've had ramps. And then if you go off the main path, there's steps and it's a bit more of a, a natural freestyle trail. <laughs> there's a secret beach down there. You can go down it, I think. This doesn't look as steep in the video as it did in real life, to me at least. <laughs> Phil's not scared of things like that, so he disappeared off. The view was still nice from up here though. Grab the rope. Ah, is it scary when you come up again? Dead easy on the way up. I'm a complete baby about climbing down steep slopes. I always get so scared I'm gonna slip. You should see me when it's icy and slippery in winter. It's not my natural habitat. In my defence, I'm not exactly prepared for climbing. I've still got my snow boots on. I made it. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> but it was completely worth it. We found a beautiful secret beach with no one else there. Just look how gorgeous it is. It was here that I started to see why this is one of Japan's top scenic places. The views were stunning. Secret beach. It's a private island at the minute. But only 200 yen each. <laughs> With the sunshine and the sparkling water, it didn't seem like the middle of winter at all. Look how blue the sky is. I'm sure it was snowing a bit just now. That's so weird to be on a beach in Japan with these floating islands and the snow was falling. This was actually our final day in Japan. It's not the end of the series though, I've mixed up the order. We only really had one day in Matsushima, then in the evening we took the bullet train to the airport to fly back at about midnight. 
Right here, it feels like we're a long way from home. So different and so beautiful. I'd actually really recommend going somewhere different on the last day of your trip. It helps chase away those last day blues. That way you only have one day to explore and enjoy a new place. So you make the most of it instead of feeling sad that it's almost over. We've come back to the main trail, but which way is it? This way. We've come up to this lookout point. There's a pretty good view of these islands here. Look at the sun glittering on the water. And just there's that island with the one tree on it. I like that one. <laughs> a single tree clinging on. In the distance I can see some islands we sailed past on the boat trip. We actually went quite a long way. Might be too windy to hear me, but there's the bridge where we came on and we've come all the way around here. We got a bit lost in the trails and spent a few hours just exploring for Kurajima. Look at this, where this tree's been torn out of the ground. It's a massive tree as well. Whoa. There's my hand for scale. <laughs> We're coming back to the start now. I really enjoyed that. That was a fun little mini adventure walking around the trails, not really knowing where you're going, getting lost, exploring. It was really good. And the best bit was when we found the secret beach. I was almost too scared to go down because it looked really steep, but that was the best bit. I don't know if it'd be so great in the summer if it was full of people. I guess the uh, reward for it being four degrees and really windy is you get the place more or less to yourself. <laughs> but I think it'd be good at any time of year. If I'm honest, when we first got here, I was thinking, one of the top views of Japan, is it really that great? But now the sun's come up and not up, <laughs> but now the sun's come out, just gone in, <laughs> and the sun's all sparkling on the water. It is really lovely. From the boat trip, although I enjoyed it, I didn't really get a sense of it because you're seeing the islands, they're quite far off and you're going between them all and you don't really get a sense of the whole thing. But being on here and seeing different views through the trees has given me a much better sense of what it's like and a lot better views actually. So if you're gonna do one thing in Matsushima, I'd go to Fukura Island. This is the best thing. For lunch, we went to the fish market. They had various stalls selling prepared food and an area where you could sit and eat. I was having a tuna don, a tuna rice bowl from the fish market. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd filmed it, but they had some pictures up of the damage from the tsunami in 2011. You can really see how hard they worked to get it up and running. And it's amazing that now you'd never know it happened. Restaurants around here aren't great for vegetarians and vegans. It's very seafoody and everywhere seems to be serving fish without any vegetarian options. So I'm just gonna grab something from the convenience store. We don't usually have to do this, but this is quite a small place, so there aren't so many options and it is very seafoody. I had a delicious pizza man from the convenience store. It's a steamed bun with cheese and tomato inside. I also discovered how delicious Japanese egg mayo sandwiches are. I wish I'd tried them earlier. I would have had a lot more of them. There's a trick art museum here in Matsushima. This is like the one I went to in Odaiba. They have paintings and optical illusions on the walls and you come away with just so many hilarious photos of you doing silly poses. Finally, we went to Ensuin Temple, which looks like a setting from a Studio Ghibli animation. We just popped into a temple. This view is actually really impressive. Those trees are so tall. We've come to Ensuin Temple. It's just a five minute walk from the seafront and where the boat cruise was. If you walk through the gate, there's lots of big caves on the right. Then you can walk through to three temples. One of them shut at the moment. We've come into Ensuin, which was 300 yen each. And it's really peaceful in here. There's so many big trees and it's a really nice garden aside from anything else. It's kind of interesting to look around. And I think at the moment we might be the only people in here. Ensuin is a matchmaking temple. You can write your wishes for love and marriage on a Kokeshi doll and leave it here for Kanon, the matchmaking goddess of mercy. Oh, this is lovely in here. 
Here's a moss garden. It might be a Zen garden with all the raked gravel. Is this what's supposed to represent the islands of Miyajima? Oh, it could be. So the rocks are like the islands. Is that one with a single tree? <laughs> Very accurate. We don't usually pay to come into temples, but this is lovely, isn't it? Everything looks in pastel colours and really calm and beautiful. These old steps are not horizontal at all. <laughs> It looks very picturesque though. The muted pastel colours, all the trees and the weathered stone gave it a kind of dreamlike quality. Somehow it didn't look like it was real. These stickers are called Senja Fuda. They have people's names on and people stick them on for good luck. If your name still shows as the sticker wears away, it's a good sign. I really like this idea, but I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate me sticker graffitiing the temple. There's all graves in the caves back here, and graves behind the temple as well. It really makes you feel small by these big rocks, and these trees are so tall. First you go through the Japanese style moss garden. There's some bamboo, my favourite. <laughs> They're really tall as well. So this side is the Japanese moss and rock garden. And then the other side is an English rose garden, which is clearly in its off season at the moment. <laughs> I'm sure it looks a lot better in the summer. The rose garden is inspired by a painting at the temple that was brought back from Europe. There's a little stream running through here. It's really subtle, but you can hear the water. And there's an icy pond. And it's heart-shaped. Look how spiky the ice is at the edges. Well, that's it. We're just about done in Matsushima now, and I've really enjoyed our day here. It feels a bit Miyajima-ish in that it's a small town by the sea. Um, with little things to go and see and it feels like we're a long way from home this feels very different from what it's like in England <laughs> the best thing we did was going over the bridge behind me to Fukura Island it was really fun exploring all the trails and that was well worth 200 yen <laughs> the boat trip was good but not the best view of the islands like I thought it might be and I really enjoyed looking around em Entsuin which was kind of a surprise because I'm not really into temples and shrines normally or gardens particularly but it was just really picturesque and so many good things to take pictures of you could easily come here on even on a day trip from Tokyo because it's not far from Sendai and you can get there on the bullet train from Tokyo in only an hour and 45 minutes, not long at all. And then it's about 25 minutes on the train from Sendai to Matsushima. But do get here early because the temple is just starting to shut down and it's about 4 p.m. at the moment. And last night all the restaurants were closing at about eight. So it is, it's not a late night party town. <laughs> you need to get here early. There's a few things we haven't done here. There's a couple more temples. There's one just next or to Entsuin that we didn't go into. There's another island that you can go over a bridge to explore. That one's free and that's got some caves that monks used to hide in. Sounds interesting. There's the Trick Art Museum. I think there's a couple of other I think there's a couple of other little museums as well that we didn't go into and you could go walking up the hills to, to those vantage points where you get a view of all the islands that would be a really good thing to do and I'm sure if you stayed over here it would look really good as the sun's going down over the islands that would be really beautiful. Matsushima is really known for oysters so if you like seafood there's a lot of that here and a lot of unagi eel restaurants as well. If you're vegetarian or vegan like me, it's not so great. There is a lot of ice cream, <laughs> but you might have to stick to the convenience store, but it's worth it for a day to come to somewhere so lovely. So if you want more ideas for things to do in Japan, have a look at my other videos. And there's new videos every Thursday if you want to subscribe. And if you like my hedgehog scarf, which has been keeping me very warm on this winter trip, it's from my website, cakeswithfaces.co.uk. See you soon. Bye-bye.